So the right guy doesn't exist. You might as well just live your lives. That's a statement Samantha makes pretty early on in episode one, and it was so fascinating to me. So that's one of the questions we're going to explore among many others. I'm Justin. Welcome back to Movies with Justin. If you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and joining the, the crew. Um, I watched episodes one and two of Sex and the City, and it was so nostalgic. It's one of my favorite shows. I love going back to it at, you know, different ages and different times in my life. And it was so cool. Uh, you know, the backdrop is the 90s. It's, well, first of all, let me, let me start with my favorite character. From the OG series, my favorite character from these early episodes is Miranda. She is so gritty. She's so beautiful. She's so New York. Um, I, you know, she just represents everything about the, the show to me. And so I want to know down in the comments, who, who do you relate to? Who's your favorite Sex and the City character? And it can be anyone from Big. It can be anyone. <laughs> As the series went on towards the end of the first, the original series, Miranda became my favorite. Uh, everything flipped. Miranda became my favorite. And then when in Just Like That, Miranda, you know, went off on kind of a tangent that I didn't really love, but she was absolutely my, my favorite from the, the beginning. But again, the, the backdrop is, is, New York, it's the late 90s, we're going into Y2K. What Pat Field did with the fashions is just bonkers. You know, the designs were experimental, um, but the, the first couple episodes are asking, is the concept of men over? Are men dead? You know, did the age of convenience kill the idea of traditional men? And I want to know your thoughts about that you know, or is it a New York thing? Is it because commuting is so inconvenient because you have to get up so early to catch the train the next morning? Do you need that convenience? I don't know. Right now I'm in Dallas, Texas, and, you know, I'm experiencing pretty much the same thing that the kids were experiencing in New York City. But I just wonder at that time, is it that romance was dead or is it just that the city had exploded so much that it just wasn't convenient to be romantic? But then again, you have big, you know, I thought it was so interesting how, you know, looking back, how Carrie met big for the first time leaving a one night stand, dropping her purse. He sees her Trojan condoms in the street. And him just being totally fascinated by how, how authentic she is, I really do believe. I was sitting here trying to think about it because he's got access to just about everyone in the city, but she's exciting. She, she's got a column where people listen to her perspective. You know, she writes at coffee shops and she's, she's around the city. She's of the city and it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to me. And I understand why someone like Big would fall in love with her. You know, she's not polished. She's very New York. She's edgy. Um, and, you know, that having a column thing, it's kind of overplayed now. It's kind of tropish. But at the time, it was Vogue. Do you guys remember? You know, I, I remember thinking it was very chic that she was this trendy, you know, New York columnist. Um, it's something I wish I could do, you know, even now. But the ladies are confronted with these dimin ever diminishing returns with these men. And they're asking, you know, by the time you're in your 30s, I think Miranda says, why should we settle? Why settle for these men that it seems like the power dynamic has shifted? And now in the 30s, you know, going into the late 30s, the men have all the power. The women are lined up for, you know, the quote unquote last few available men. And it's no fun. I'm living in it. I'm swimming in it myself. <laughs> and it's absolutely no fun, you know. Um, and so uh, Samantha says pretty quickly on, forget it. 
you know, um, sleep around like a man or have sex like a man, emotionless, cold, and detached. And does that work? Is a woman who, you know, is sometimes a contradiction? Are they able to just cut off their emotion and sleep around like men? I don't know. I don't think so. I mean, Samantha's obviously able to do it. Um, but in the back of your head, you're always looking, and even she was, with the modelizer. You're always looking for that ex a little bit of acceptance, if that makes sense. She, she wanted to be seen with this guy or seen in the eyes of this guy as beautiful and as hot. And I think that's what we all want. And that is not contradictory, but it, it might be difficult if you're sleeping around without any emotion. Even Carrie, you know, Big goes to the fashion show and he's dating this model. And there's something, a small piece of Carrie that says, I want this guy to look at me, you know, and see me in this beautiful light and, and kind of feel accepted uh, in the mainstream that, that we all feel. And I feel that too. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I think that's what's beautiful about feminine energy is that it can be all things. It, it's boss and CEO, and it can be very soft and tender as well. And I think that's the beauty of it. And so, you know, sleeping around like men and being cold and detached I don't know. I leave it to you guys to, to answer for women and to say if that's a concept that actually works, you know. But I don't know. You know, it's like, is it the age of convenience? Is Did technology kill the idea of traditional romance and men? I don't, I don't know, you know. Um, I don't know if it's a New York problem. I don't know if it's a societal problem. But Carrie asks pretty quickly on in the episode, how did we get into this mess? And I just thought it was so interesting how she had the absolute wind knocked out of her sails when she met Big, you know. Um, and how could you not fall in love with that kind of energy? He was so accepting of her, so interested in her, read her column to, you know, understand her perspective. Uh, managed to bump into her around the city. Um, just awesome, you know. So, and to understand where it goes, you know, it's it's bittersweet, um, but also beautiful to see the beginning of what is a long and beautiful romance. She's right now a, you know, young, single, Sex in the City columnist, but, you know, we know where it goes and We'll see where it goes. <laughs> what were your your favorite parts of these first couple of episodes? I just loved the montages around the city. You got to see the energy of the city. You got to see different people's perspectives. And I wish they had kind of kept that concept going up, going on for the rest of the series. But it was clear that they needed to focus in on the relationship of the, the four ladies. But I loved them going and hearing different perspectives from different people around the city, you really got a sense of the pulse of pre-COVID, pre-9-11 New York. And that's one of the reasons I'm thrilled to go back and watch the first couple seasons of this show, is to just see New York in all of its glory and kind of be nostalgic over it. I miss it, you know. So anyway, if you enjoyed this this chat about the first couple episodes of Sex and the City, please let me know in the comments who's your favorite character. Do you agree with Samantha's statement that the right guy does not exist, that we might as well just live our lives? What I think she might be saying is <clears throat> when you let go and you just kind of let things happen, you end up attracting into your life the things that you ultimately want. And so from that perspective, I might agree with Samantha, but there are so many ways to look at it. And I love that the show is a, a conversation that I hope we continue to have. And so until our next conversation, leave this video a like, a comment, and subscribe to Movies with Justin for more Sex in the City.
until next time.